blessed day to all of you, brothers and sisters, and to those who join us in worship through this live stream at the Diocesan Shrine of Jesus the Divine Word in Christ the King Mission Seminary. Today is Thursday of the 10th week in Ordinary Time. Our Mass presider today is Reverend Father Louis Punzelan, SVD. Our Eucharistic celebration will now begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. And with your spirit. Whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. My dear brothers and sisters, the Gospel reading for today contains some specific rules to govern our personal relationships. Our personal relationships with one another should be characterized by fraternal charity. And that fraternal charity is based on the example of Christ. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right and by your guidance do it through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over the hearts of the children of Israel. But whenever a person turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. All of us gazing with an unveiled face on the glory of the Lord and being transformed into the same image from glory to glory as from the Lord who is the Spirit. 
Therefore, since we have the ministry through the mercy shown us, we are not discouraged. And even though our gospel is veiled, it is veiled for those who are perishing, in whose case the God of this age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers, so that they may not see the light of the gospel, of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, ourselves as your slaves for the sake of Jesus. For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to bring to light the knowledge of the glory of God on the face of Jesus Christ. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The glory of the Lord will dwell in our land. The glory of the Lord will dwell in our land. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace to his people. The glory of the Lord will dwell in our land. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in your land. The glory of the Lord will dwell in our land. Kindness and truth shall meet. Justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. The glory of the Lord will dwell in our land. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and salvation along the way of his steps. The glory of the Lord will dwell in our land. We rise to honor the Holy Gospel. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading is taken from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, unless your holiness surpasses that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, You shall not kill, because whoever kills will be liable to judgment. I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever says to his brother, Raka, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. Whoever says, You fool, will be liable to fiery Gehina. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there at the altar, go first and reconcile, reconcile with your brother and then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court with him. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge. The judge will hand you over to the guard. 
and you will be thrown into prison. Amen. I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. My dear friends in Christ, this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Last May 31st, a Monday, we heard the news about a policeman who figured in a shooting incident involving a 52-year-old woman in a store somewhere in Fairview, Quezon City. To make the long story short, the woman died. Last December, before Christmas, there was another policeman who figured in a similar incident, shooting and killing a 52-year-old mother and her 25-year-old son in Tarlac on a Monday morning. Anger, rage, violence. My dear brothers and sisters, let us reflect about these things that affect the lives of some of us. Anger, rage, violence. Our gospel reading for today contains some specific rules that should govern our personal relationships. Our gospel tells us that our relationship with one another should be primarily based on fraternal charity, Christian charity. And that fraternal charity is also based on the example of Christ. The Lord in the Gospel today teaches, whoever is angry with his brothers will be liable to judgment. In another instance in the Gospel, the Lord also says, Love your enemies. Pray for your persecutors. Do not judge. You will not be judged. Do not condemn. And you will not be condemned. I remember St. Francis of Assisi who has a beautiful prayer about loving peace. Francis of Assisi says, and I quote, Lord, make me a channel of your peace. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is hatred, joy. My dear friends, whether we admit it or not, once in a while, we all get angry. Who does not get mad? Everybody gets angry. There are occasions, there are instances in our daily life when our patience is tested. And there are occasions in which we get angry. I remember somebody who said that anger is an expensive luxury in which only people of a certain income bracket can indulge into. However, every normal person is tempted at times to spit on his hands, to raise the black flag, to begin slitting throats. Anger is not only inevitable, sometimes anger is also necessary Absence of anger could mean indifference, which is the most disastrous of all human failings. Even our Lord in the market said, Why are you making the house of my father 
a den of robbers, you are turning it into a marketplace. That is a different kind of anger because there are types of anger. Basically, there is what we call righteous anger and unrighteous anger. The Lord's anger is righteous. But for some of us, our anger is unrighteous. What does the Bible say about anger? Does the Bible say anything about anger? Of course, a lot. The Bible condemns anger. The Bible condemns the person who gets angry at his fellow men without a cause or any sufficient reason to get angry. There are people who get angry just for the sake of getting angry. There are people who are angry from the beginning of the day until the end of the night. They want to show who is in command, who is in control. They do not care if they exhibit displeasure and they displease other people. There is anger every now and then. In the Gospel reading, the Lord forbids not only murder but also anger because anger is the root of murder. And then he goes on to forbid abusive language. Abusive language, which is nothing more than an outward expression of the inner anger. The Lord forbids the anger that broods. The Lord forbids the anger that will not forget. The Lord forbids the anger that refuses to be pacified. It is the anger that seeks revenge. It is the anger that seeks retaliation. It is the anger that refuses to forgive and forget. Anger should be banished, especially the kind of anger that stays very long. My dear friends, didn't the Lord also preach, do not judge, do not condemn? The measure you use to measure others will also be measured back to you. My dear friends in Christ, Long-lasting anger is bad. I know people living in the same house and they are not in speaking terms with one another. I know siblings and it is sad. It is sad when siblings do not talk with one another. I know siblings who do not respect and disregard and ignore one another. Long-lasting anger is bad. Contemptuous speaking is worse. Careless or malicious conversation that destroys a person's reputation and good name is the worst of all. And anyone who is a slave of anger or who speaks in the accent of contempt or who destroys somebody else's good name may not have committed murder in action, but in his heart, he is guilty of this offense. What is the best remedy for anger? Well, you can read a lot in the internet about what people now call anger management. Anger management, but that is not my point here. This is a homily. This is not a seminar on anger management. The best remedy for anger is delay. Delay. The best answer to anger is silence. Silence. Keep cool. Keep cool. Anger is not an argument. Swallowing your words before you say them is better than having to eat them afterwards. Because after all, 
as one of our teachers in the seminary when we were seminarians a long time ago said Father Floresca may he rest in peace anger does not solve any problem anger does not solve any problem and may I add anger can be toxic and as we say in Bisaya kapoy kaayo you get angry kapoy emotionally kapoy it's tiring and another philosopher said anger is temporary insanity my dear friends the Lord preaches something that is supremely realistic. He seems to assume that people, despite their moral efforts, will at times yield to anger. Then, let us follow the sacred duty of reconciliation. What is the sacred duty of reconciliation? The Lord says, If you bring your gift to the altar, and then recall that your mother or your brother has anything against you, leave your gift at the altar, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and follow me. Worship is a sacred duty. But the Lord is saying that even worship must be postponed in favor of reconciliation. The Eucharist demands the spirit of forgiveness. It demands the desire for reconciliation. The Eucharist demands the sign of peace. There can be no complete Eucharistic worship. If our hearts are cold and angry and close to our brothers and sisters, what is the solution? Again from the Lord. This is what he calls celestial arithmetic. Have you heard of celestial arithmetic? What is celestial? Heavenly. Heavenly. Celestial arithmetic. The Lord is practically telling us, when you forgive, do not use the calculator. Do not use the abacus. Do not use the board and you make marks on the board on how many times you forgive. One of the apostles said, Lord, how many times? Seven times? And the Lord suggests what he calls celestial arithmetic. What is that? Forgive your brother from the heart. Forgive your brother from 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 the heart Amen Let us all stand Let us pray to God that we His people who have experienced His forgiveness May bring the joy of reconciliation to the world and let our response be, Lord, Father, make us channels of your peace. Father, make us channels of your peace. That the church may truly become a sacrament for the world through the ministry of reconciliation. We pray, Father, make us channels of your peace that those who are rightly committed to causes of justice and human liberation may not only accuse and protest, but recognize and uproot sin in their own hearts. We pray, Father, make us channels of your peace, that married couples who are estranged from one another may come to forgive, understand, and appreciate one another once again, we pray, Father, make us channels of your peace, that we may be healed of our pride and be humble enough to accept our faults and failures so that we may live peacefully with one another. We pray, Father, make us channels of your peace, for our civil and political leaders, 
that the Holy Spirit may guide them to make sound and swift policy decisions to fight this public health crisis and come to the aid of those lacking in basic necessities of life and devise social and economic solutions for the welfare of the citizenry. We also pray and thank you for the ordinary people who find ways to help the least and the less among the society. May the true Bayanihan spirit prevail among us all. We pray, Father, make us channels of your peace, that the dead may live in eternal peace. We pray, Father, make, make us, us channels, channels of, of your peace. peace. And we pray for our other intentions. Heavenly Father, deliver us from hardness of heart and grant that we may always be ready to seek reconciliation and heal any form of division. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray, my dear friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us now give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him, through Christ our Lord, and through Him the angels praise Your Majesty, dominions adore, powers tremble before You. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Say 
are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dew fall, so that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more he gave you thanks gave the chalice to the disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. And do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread all over the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Onesto, our Bishop. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the apostles, the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, with Him, in Him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray that we will become peacemakers. Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against, against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our days. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. You said to the apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace that can only proceed from God be always with you. And with your spirit. With each other, with a sign.
if you remember that you have offended your brother, leave your gift at the altar and first get reconciled with your brother. My dear friends, this is Jesus, the Prince of Peace, the Lamb of God who takes away our sins and the sin of the world. Happy are those invited to his banquet. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter, enter under my roof. roof. But, but only, only say, say the, the word, word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and a desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil and lead us to what is right through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oratio Imperata. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by our healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed 
made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country and the whole world. We pray for our health workers, that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray, pray for, for us. us. San Roque, pray, pray for, for us. us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray, pray for, for us. us. San Pedro Calumsod, pray, pray for, for us. us. Saints Arnold Janssen and Josef Reynadimitz, pray for, pray for us. us. Please uh, be seated for a few minutes, my dear friends. Maganda umaga po sa inyong lahat. Nais kong um, batiin ang lahat ng ating dumadalo sa online mass dito sa Christ the King Seminary ng Shrine of Jesus the Divine Word ng isang mapagpala at magandang umaga sa inyo at sa inyong mga pamilya. Nais ko rin kunin ang pagkakataong ito upang magpasalamat sa ating mga benefactors mga sponsors, donors na patuloy na tumutulong at hindi nagsasawang dumamay lalong lalo na sa ating mga seminarista na nag-aaral ng pagpapari. May I take also this opportunity to continue to appeal for for help, for assistance. May I call the attention, may I, I appeal to those who are who are interested and probably yeah, interested to help support seminarian studying for the priesthood. Um, we continue to look for benefactors and sponsors to support the needs of our seminarians here at Christ the King. If you are interested and if you want to know more about our program, you may email me at CKMS Donor Care at gmail.com that we are flashing on your screen CKMS donor care at gmail.com and uh, may I also uh, call your attention to our bank account that is being flashed in front of you those who are at home Banco de Oro the account name is uh, Divine Word Mission Seminary Inc. Divine Word Mission Seminary Inc. 000-220-191247 In case you miss this, you can replay the Mass anyway and you can see this announcement again. And also, we have two GCash numbers that we can appreciate. We will appreciate if you can send us some help for the seminarians. The two GCash numbers are also posted or flashed in front of you. Tatanawin po namin malaking utang na loob kung patuloy kayong tutulong sa pagpapaaral ng mga nagpapari dito sa Christ the King Seminary. God bless all of you. May God reward you more abundantly. Let us all stand, please. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace and let us all be peacemakers. Thanks be to God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is. Oh
blessed are you among we men. Maria, Ave Maria. Blessed are you, blessed are you.